All right. I'm going to talk about creating a program in LoggerNet. So we're going to go to program, shortcut. This can build us a new program. Go ahead, select new. I'm going to pick the data logger model. CR10 and CR10X use the same language. There's just some slight differences in what you can do. You can do more with the CR10X. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that since that one program, that's what I'm programming for. Um, this lab also uses CR1000s quite often, so you may have to select that one instead. But we're just going to go ahead with CR10X. The scan interval is literally how frequently it takes a measurement. So the scan interval will take a measurement and then average over another period of time but this is how often it's taking those averages. So this is basically like a sample every 10 seconds. Okay. So now we have available sensors and devices, and then we have the CR10X itself. So the first thing it does is record battery voltage. And there's also a program signature. Now what we're gonna do is the first thing we wanna record the internal temperature of the device. So we're going to go to control. Um, do we go? No, that's not right. There we go. Under sensors, temperature, data logger, internal temperature, and this is going to be a reference point. So we go ahead and add. It's going to give us a name. So I'm going to go internal temp. So we're just going to internal, right? Degree C. It's going to add that to the program one. Now I have four different T-type thermocouples. Nice description down here. Go ahead and add that by hitting the little arrow. So it's gonna be called temp one. And the reference temperature measurement has to be the internal measurement. And that's gonna be the same thing when I add another T-type. Now you can always add them up here, but don't do this for some reason. Sometimes it's uh, weird. So just go ahead and create individual ones. I want to reference internal. Okay. <clears throat> now, when I say reference internal, it does not mean that that is a calibration measurement. Um, when we do actual calibration, you know, putting the thermocouple ends in to uh, water along with, a, with a, an additional sensor or a you know, reference sensor or a reference um, thermometer. Uh, that is where we gener generate calibration values and that's what you go ahead and put back in your program file later on. So here we have all of these things. Now, what else I need to add I'm going to go down to meteorological, relative humidity and temperature. And I have a, I'm using a Visala sensor, which is an HMP50 or HPM60 or HMP60 temperature and relative humidity sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. Temperature is going to be, I'm going to call it Visala in degree C, and relative humidity is going to be called RH in percent. So we've added this. Now, I want to do a couple things here. That's good. That's good. Okay. 
just want to make sure that that's all referencing internal. The Visala does not reference the internal temp. It just is by itself. Now if I check the wiring, you can see that these are the five wires that are going to be used. All right, so if I got any other thing as well, this also exists. There's only two wires in the thermocouple. So we have all of this. Um, if you want to add in something additional, you can add, uh, you know, like a relay and such. So that goes under control. So this is going to be a simple control with a dead band. So based on the measurement of RH, I want it to control within 5% or 75% humidity. So I'm going to be hooking up a humidifier to this. So it'll add humidity if it goes below the lower limit. And if it goes above the upper limit, it'll stop. So this is the set port high, which means set port on, essentially. So the upper limit is going to be 80% humidity, and the lower limit is going to be 70% humidity. So when you go above 80% RH, port turns off. When you go below 70% RH, port turns on. Now later on, I will hook up a physical relay to this. Um, but note, this is going to run 24 hours a day. So this control setting. So basically, I'm controlling humidity 75 plus or minus 5% all the time. Okay, we're going to go next. Now, we have this array ID for all of the outputs. It's going to be titled 101. So if you've used a greenhouse, if you read off a greenhouse data logger, you probably noticed that there's an array ID where it could be 101 or 102. And the 102 is, is a total day average, right, uh, for PAR. But 101 is all of your uh, minute by minute measurements or well, every 15 minute average. So what we're gonna do is every 15 minutes, it's going to measure the battery voltage um, of the logger, which has that setting where it's going to take measurements every 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, it's gonna take a measurement for 15 full minutes. So all we, all we wanna do is set that to 15 for everything. Right, so every 15 minutes, it's going to take this measurement rate we want. Um, with the, we also wanted to make sure it's an average, right? So go ahead and select average every 15 minutes. Average, average. You have the option to go over and rename them if you want. Relative humidity, you can only do a sample. So this is basically what your columns will be in the actual uh, logger output, right? You can go ahead and add things in here. So this, should you want to do something differently, um, and this is you know every day basically. It'll store whatever it is. Um, actually, this is less than today, but whatever. Doesn't really matter right now. But basically, this is how you do a simple control setup. So then when you finish, it'll save. Uh, I'm going to go chamber two, right? So what it's done is I don't want to send this to the data logger right now, so no. But if I go ahead and open up, right, chamber two, creates a DLD file. The DLD file can be used to run the logger for CR23X or CR10X. I think also CR23X, but a CR1000 uses CSI, right? So you can uh, get that from elsewhere. The other thing you can do is look at the wiring text. So this is just directionally where to add everything. More usefully, the wiring diagram is available. And this diagram will show you exactly where to connect everything. So one high, one low, two high, two low, et cetera. So 
so that way when you go to the actual logger, you know where things go. All right, in any case, that should be it. Uh, but keep of note, if you open Edlog, you can open a DLD file like this. And you can make edits to it. So that's something maybe I'll talk about in another video. Uh,